Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ICO Visions podcast. My name is Jam Crypto. I'm your host. And today we have a very special guest with us going by the name of John Hartigan from Intiva Health. How are you, John? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, glad to be here. Great, great. Awesome. So uh, I guess just to start now, who is John Hartigan and what exactly is Intiva Health? So uh, John Hartigan, uh, I'm the Executive Vice President of uh, Strategic Development and Partnerships here at Intiva Health. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, uh, launching numerous business, uh, businesses ranging from financial ATM uh, networks to consumer electronics products to uh, different uh, um, internet ventures um, uh, throughout the years. Uh, and after the last exit I had, which was uh, a company called Mobile Cloth, I decided to uh, go in a totally different direction. And uh, I had run into the guys, uh, it was called Procial at the time, and they were looking for someone to assist them in putting together strategic relationships and, uh, and a sales um, operation. And uh, I came on board with them uh, uh, just about two years ago. And uh, through many pivots and a, a lot of different uh, uh, direction changes, we um, have arrived at Intiva Health, and it's been a very exciting, exciting journey. And, uh, and so now we're with Intiva Health, and Intiva Health is a, uh, a career and credential management platform uh, for licensed medical professionals. And what it does is it allows them to streamline and automate the administrative side of their uh, career requirements, which that may sound for non-medical folk uh, not that interesting. However, if you are in the medical world, you will know what a sea of red tape that is. Uh, for a doctor alone, there's something like 25 different documents that they are certifications that they need to maintain every year, a uh, number of bureaucracies they have to deal with, and all of these things they have to stay on top of to stay compliant. Uh, and so um, we have built a platform in order to manage that process. And uh, that represents a huge number um, of hours that they have to do every year. And also, uh, it, it, it represents a huge amount of money uh, that is uh, in an inefficiency that we're addressing. So we can get into a little more of the details later. But in a nutshell, that's, that's what Intiva Health does. It's really addressing the extreme inefficiency in the behind the scenes of, medical space, of the medical space here in the United States specifically. That's, that's really what we're addressing. So, yeah. So, so Jam, really the problem that we are addressing, uh, which again, any physician that's listening to this is, is very familiar with, uh, is when a physician begins to practice, um, they face a compliance um, requirement that most of us do not. Um, so every year they have to maintain um, these different licenses. So for example, they obviously have their medical license. They have their, their drug enforcement um, uh, agency license. They have, you know, they have to show that their, their advanced life supports are up to date. And all of these things come from different uh, places. And, and if you can imagine, I mean, think about how ridiculous it is to just go to the DMV and get a, a, a driver's license, right? Well, imagine having to do that with like 25 other agencies that don't talk to each other, right? And you have to make sure that all of that stuff is done and compliant and up to date in order to mm -hmm. practice medicine. Uh, and that's what they face. I mean, they really, it's like they face going to the DMV like 25 times a year. It's ridiculous. And so what we have built is we've, we've established a, uh, a digital system for them to be able to manage all of that stuff in a very user-friendly way. Um, and then uh, with this hash graph integration that we're going to talk about a little bit more is we've established the ability to primary source verify those documents. And, and, and what that means is when a, a physician goes to a hospital uh, to practice, they have to be, 
they have to be given privileges to practice at that hospital. And that is a very, very um, uh, uh, specific and, and kind of arduous process. So they talk to the credentialing board and the credentialing board takes that packet of information I just described, all those licenses, and they have somebody in, the, in an office somewhere open up a paper file of all of those and start calling all of these references uh, to verify that this doctor is the doctor they say they are and that these documents are in fact the documents that they are supposed to be. And they will call and, and establish the reputation of that doctor by calling all those references just like if you went to get a job, but they have to do that on all the documents. And so then once that's done, they send it to the privileging board. The privileging board signs off on it and says, okay, this is great. And then they allow them and grant them privileges. That process takes months, okay, months, even at the highest end hospitals like Mayo and some, you know, Mayo Clinic and some of these others. And so our hash graph integration is going to allow us through the technology and through the platform that we already have built that's on the market to be able to take that process from literally months to seconds because the technology actually verifies and then puts on a immutable date and time stamps onto this credential packet that is identified by a, through the verified doctor and then the system itself verifies and reaches consensus about that particular doctor's reputation mm -hmm. and verification. And so that's really the core and the secret sauce of what Intiva Health is doing. Very interesting. It is an antiquated system, okay? And, and a lot of people have no idea that this is what actually happens. I mean, uh, we have kind of a, you know, an inside joke or a, a thing here in the office that, you know, you spend a lot more time researching the last car you bought than the doctor that you go and see uh, yeah. who's gonna be doing surgery on you. Uh, and, and it's kind of scary to think about it that way, but that's the truth. And the reality is, that we as consumers and as patients are becoming more savvy um, and we're becoming more aware and we require more um, up-to-date information about who it is that is going to be seeing us and treating us as well as our loved ones. And so our system allows for the verification and more transparency on who is actually treating patients and are they board certified doctors and have they gone through those courses and are they current? All of those things will, uh, through our system, eventually be able to be uh, seen and very transparent. Great. I can definitely see that as a constant need and something that people would definitely value and uh, pay attention to. That's a uh, great uh, peace of mind <laughs> that you've given. So uh, thanks for that. That's, yeah. that's, that's interesting. We and just to kind of give you a representation, um, so just to give you some handles as far as what we're talking about in the marketplace here. So we have studies, and, and this, again, uh, in the United States, the average doctor is spending 8.7 hours a week on non-clinical, non-patient paperwork. That's a huge number. And if you were to take the average salary of a physician wow. in the United States, okay, and you were to aggregate all the physicians in the United States and you were to do a calculation, which we've done, that represents over $53 billion, okay, in inefficiencies. Now, I'm not saying that we can, we can give them back all 8.7 hours, but we, with our platform, most of that time, a significant portion of that time, 50% or more, maybe even 75% is dealing with credentials, dealing with licensure, dealing with um, you know, DEA license and CPR, all these things that they have to deal with. And, and it's because of all that red tape I was talking about before. Now, on the facility side, okay, on the facility side, meaning the people that are, that are doing all of that reputation checking and primary source verification, um, every, uh, that represented many, many, many more billions of dollars, okay, in, in waste. And also every day that a physician is not on the schedule uh, from the point that they have been hired to the time that they um, are gained privileges, that represents $7,500 a day in lost revenue for a hospital every day. 
And so if you multiplied that by every facility and clinic and whatever, on average, that's just a huge number. And so ultimately our, really our goal. Okay. I mean, this is, this is really where it comes down to. Yes, we are a for-profit company and yes, that is part of what we do, but we believe that with this system, we are going to take lots and lots of time and lots and lots of money and put it back into play for better patient care and a better patient experience ultimately. And that, that's really our goal here. Great. And uh, I guess now who thought of the idea and how long have you been actually testing or working on the idea? So um, we have, our platform has actually been live uh, for over a year. Um, we came up with the idea over three years ago. So a little history, we were born out of an actual practice management company and we manage anesthesiologists uh, here in the United States um, uh, uh, down in Texas. And uh, so we really understand kind of where this comes from. So we, we staff hospitals with anesthesiologists. And so we have to deal with this credentialing uh, every day. And so it came out of that need truly uh, for a better way, because that was a huge cost center for us um, and a constant headache. So we, we had developed our kind of own internal uh, way. I mean, it literally started with spreadsheets and then we got a little bit more advanced and then we did a couple of other things and we started to conglomerate these things. And then, and then we realized we really just need to write a better uh, code and write a better software platform. And that's what we did. And so the current platform uh, as it is now has been in the market for about a year. Um, and we had had one for about a year previous to that. Um, and we have thousands and thousands of doctors and nurses and, and uh, multiple facilities that use the platform currently. And we're in the process right now of um, integrating the Hashgraph um, uh, decentralized ledger technology. And we will be going live with the integration portion of that uh, this summer. So we will be one of the very first, I, think, I believe we're actually the first enterprise solution that is going to be on the market for uh, with a hash graph uh, as its base. And uh, I guess now, is Intiva Health uh, an Ethereum-based token? Uh, maybe you can elaborate on that. Sure. So we began looking at blockchain solutions two years ago almost. <clears throat> and, the, the main, and the main reason we decided to go with the decentralized ledger, we were looking, like I said, blockchain, was we needed to address our security concerns. Um, you know, currently we're running on uh, AWS and, and, but as you know, you know, security is always an issue and, and, and things can get hacked. Mm -hmm. And we have such highly sensitive data uh, regarding doctors and physicians um, and their lives um, that we knew that we had to have a better security solution. And so that was really the main impetus for blockchain. Um, but at the time, they just the, the, the speeds were too slow. The storage capacity was too slow because we actually put documents. We're putting documents into blockchains, which is, right. you know, uh, MIT was the first to actually do it. Uh, we gained some knowledge from them. And then we started, we figured out how to put our packet in. And, that's, and then we met Hashgraph and we realized, oh, my gosh, this is great. They had all of the things that we needed in order to do this blockchain solution. And at that time, we were looking at um, a tokenized economy because we actually, our platform actually operates an economy. We have a marketplace. And so we were looking at ways to um, tokenize our current medical economy. Um, and so, as you know, um, Hashgraph does not currently have a, a public ledger live. Um, it, it is coming. Um, it's my understanding it'll be uh, live in the next uh, six months or so or, or a few months, and I haven't looked at the latest updates. But because of that, we could not uh, launch a token on the Hashgraph um, network. But um, so we, we decided to launch an ERC-20 token that, that complements the uh, integration of Hashgraph and tokenizes our medical economy. And how that works is the uh, physicians and other licensed medical professionals and other stakeholders in the system will be able to uh, earn tokens in a kind of a reward fashion for taking uh, certain actions in the platform. There are 24 actions that they can take in the platform. So I had mentioned 
you know, they manage documents, okay? And so for, we're, we are a, um, a data company. And so when they update, for example, one of their documents, um, that is important to us. And it also makes the system work more efficiently and more accurately because basically currently the way that data is stored and, and shared among facilities right now is it's not, it's, it's siloed. So like, you know, Mayo Clinic doesn't talk to, uh, you know, uh, St. Louis Mercy Hospital. That, that credential information stays siloed in those particular um, facilities, right? They don't talk to each other. And so they, so one of them, if, if they have a doctor that comes from one to the other, they have to pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, did Dr. Smith work over there at, you know, St. Louis Mercy Hospital? And they say, oh yeah, he did from watching or whatever, but it's super inefficient. So what we did was we built a platform so that all the information follows the doctor wherever they go, okay? And then the facilities can tap into that information. And again, this is no charge to the facilities and it doesn't cost the physicians anything. And it allows for an open and transparent sharing of this credential information. But what's important is that that information surrounding the doctor is the most up-to-date possible. So we incentivize the, different, the physicians and also the administrators to keep that, up, that information as updated as possible so that everybody has the correct and updated information about that doctor. And so we do that by issuing tokens for different things in the platform. And then those medical professionals and the, and the others in the platform can use those tokens to purchase goods and services, curated medical goods and services within the platform. Things like continuing medical education, things that we have a library of over 200 courses. They, they're required to take those things. Things like uh, medical malpractice insurance. Um, and we have a number of other um, things that they can purchase uh, with the tokens in the platform. So it's a true tokenized economy. Wow, very interested to see this uh, project grow. Yes, yeah, so, okay, so right now where we currently are is we actually have a fully operational platform on the market. Um, it, you know, you can actually license medical professionals. I mean, anybody can go to antivahealth.com and read about um, and, and see what we're doing. Um, it walks you through the different um, uh, capabilities of our platform. Um, now, any licensed medical professional is welcome to sign up um, at, at no cost to the platform. And like I mentioned before, we have thousands and thousands of users and they use the platform every day. And within the platform, just to kind of give you a, a little preview, they can, again, they can manage, store, and then share with one click all of their credential information between different facilities, you know, clinics, hospitals, um, or if they need to send some you know, information, their medical malpractice insurance, they can do that. And then if they so desire, like, so for example, my wife is a registered nurse and she has an account and she told me the other day, oh, geez, I, I you know, I, I really need to look for another gig. This thing, you know, my job right now, just, uh, there's a lot of changes and I want to see. And I said, Hey, sweetheart, you know, I know we just updated a bunch of jobs. You got to go and check out the, the jobs. And so we have a whole careers, um, um, uh, platform that they can you can go and find jobs um, curated really high quality medical jobs um, over I believe last count it was something like six thousand to nine thousand jobs I can't remember what the final number was and I know we're adding more um, and that's that's up and running and, and built and she told me you know I also need to get some of my CEs or, or uh, continuing education uh, credits and so we have over 200 jobs, I mean, I'm sorry, 200 um, CME courses in our library that are certified uh, accredited courses that physicians and uh, nurses and, uh, you know, mid-level uh, NPs and um, PAs, they can all go in there and take uh, these courses to satisfy their requirements for uh, licensure in, in every state. Um, and uh, we also have a digital connect, uh, which is a HIPAA compliant uh, communication network that physicians and, and clinicians can use to uh, communicate digitally uh, because of HIPAA compliance laws here in the United States are very strict. 
um, and, as you may know. And um, so they have to be very careful how they communicate uh, regarding patient information. And so within our platform, they can use that um, uh, to, to communicate in a HIPAA compliant manner. So um, all of those things are currently up and running live. Uh, right now, and the integration of the uh, hash graph verification piece will be live this summer. Great. Looking forward to seeing that. And I guess now um, maybe you can happen to shed some light on the team's background and experience. Maybe that can include any core team members uh, or anyone on the management team, developers, etc. Sure. So we, like I mentioned before, we were born out of a practice management company. Um, and that is extremely, which still operates and, and is uh, part of our organization. And that is critically important for your listeners to understand in this particular space, um, because you could not take a 25 year old whiz kid technology guy who has no experience or does not have real experience in the medical space mm -hmm. and apply a technological uh, uh, solution to this problem because of the fact it's very complex. Um, it is a very complex problem. Um, it is, uh, there are multiple stakeholders. It is a system that is grown up organically over many, many decades, a hundred, you know, maybe a hundred years and it works the way it works. And so we, what's important is we were we have a lot of talent that came from the practice management side and then we applied a technological solution to it knowing what we knew. So for example, uh, Gary McIntosh is our COO. Um, he has been in practice management for uh, a decade and has been running um, anesthesiologists and, and uh, other physicians um, has, has, has been managing this, this very, um, you know, challenging task of keeping the hospital staffed and under all of the new, um, you know, Affordable Care Act rules, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he manages to uh, keep the, those facilities um, uh, staffed uh, with top quality people. And so he was really uh, very, very um, uh, important in the process of building this uh, particular uh, platform. And then Sean Frisquillo, um, he is our uh, chief development manager. And he is, uh, again, a background in um, practice management and healthcare tech, and intimately understands all of the different systems, including, you know, EHRs and EMRs and um, this movement over the last uh, decade to digitize everything and understands HIPAA compliance and uh, a number of other um, things like that, uh, that that are super important to this project. Um, I myself um, come from the entrepreneurial uh, space and um, specifically in uh, strategic partnerships with uh, um, large entities, including you know, not-for-profits, including Fortune 500 and, and uh, even Fortune 50 companies, um, my forte is, is uh, bringing together partnerships, strategic relationships, um, and, and putting them into the marketplace um, and leveraging those, uh, those connections uh, to, to launch companies and then also to scale companies. Um, and that's really my component of this and, and kind of be in the face of, of the organization uh, when we go out to um, investors as well as to others. Um, and uh, Jim Comstock is our president, um, and he specializes in, um, his background is in um, insurance and also in very large uh, logistical organizations. Um, he's a retired um, uh, general, major general, and um, has huge um, experience with scaling massive, uh, you know, organizations in a very short amount of time. Um, and as well as his insurance background is extremely important to us because some of our biggest monetizers and some of our biggest um, uh, partnerships are with uh, the insurance side of the business, medical malpractice, uh, cyber insurance. And so his network of individuals um, is extremely valuable to us and, and being able to plug us into the current uh, 
uh, state of affairs and also regulations. Um, you know, there's a, like I said, a lot of compliance issues. So that is uh, uh, the main part of the team. And uh, we also have ex excellent um, development talent on the team. Um, including blockchain developers and um, uh, hashgraph integrators and et cetera, et cetera. So we are, we are well positioned with our uh, current staff and um, really excited about um, getting this thing to market. Awesome. That's great. And uh, I guess now, was there any uh, past successes perhaps from yourself or your team that you wanted to mention? So yeah, so we have um, recently, we've really gained a lot of traction um, in the blockchain space. Uh, you know, we've kind of been in the bat cave for the last uh, year and a half, uh, getting everything dialed in and lined up and launched. Um, and then we really came out in a big way uh, to announce the token sale, um, starting at South by Southwest in Austin about a month and a half ago, two months ago. And when we did that, uh, we entered a few competitions. And actually, it's, it's kind of funny. I didn't even realize we were entering competitions. I mean, they had said competition, but it was like, hey, you got four minutes to speak at this event, you know, and this is the slot you have. And I said, oh, okay, great. So we went out there and we, we, I got up there and, and we started talking about our project. And lo and behold, we won a number of ICO pitch contests and, and also um, a startup pitch contests. And so, and then it started to kind of steamroll. So the South by Southwest one is called the World Tokenomic Forum. And it started with 137 uh, applicants of startup from 17 different countries. And um, we, we came down into the final work in called the Sweet 16. And we're going to, they invited us and all expenses paid a uh, trip to Grand Cayman to compete in what's called the Sandcastle competition. And we were nice. up against uh, uh, 15 other um, very, very interesting projects, some really cool ones. I, I'm actually really excited about who we're competing against. And I, I actually truly firmly believe that we are a top contender. Um, I, I believe that we can walk away with the, with the win. Um, and um, I did not know what a big deal it was uh, actually when they told me. And so I'm very excited about that. Um, we got picked up by a lot of media on that. Um, and then we also won an ICO pitch uh, in San Francisco. Um, uh, we were doing a, a, a presentation to a number of uh, Silicon Valley investors and uh, crypto enthusiasts, blockchain enthusiasts. And it was, uh, I think it was 11 or 12 uh, companies and we had a, a four minute spot. And we, we went up there and, and we nailed it and they, you know, they told us we won and, and we, you know, I, I was very excited about it. And so, you know, went up there and took the pictures and everything, but what that did, which was really exciting was we is immediately, we got a ton of attention there and we were approached by Citibank, uh, the, the big city bank, right? New York city. And they said, Hey, we have a private event. We want you to come to and be on a panel. And it's all of our private equity venture funds. And uh, we want you to discuss, uh, you know, how blockchain is addressing inefficiencies in, in healthcare. I said, hey, great. So we went to New York last week and uh, presented on these panels. And I mean, we're, we were just blown away. I mean, that's kind of the top of the food chain when it comes to uh, the financial space. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we were welcomed with open arms and made a ton of great connections and we're, we have ongoing discussions with Citibank now. And, um, and so it's, it's just very exciting um, what's been transpiring from those wins and from the traction that we've gained, um, especially going into this token sale that, uh, that we are going into. So very exciting, man. I can, I'll tell you, um, I'm going Grand Caymans in uh, about two weeks. Uh, we, I've never been, so I'm really excited about uh, about that. And uh, I look great. at it, even if we lose, I'm, I'm hoping to lay on the beach for a while. So it'll be great. Fantastic. That sounds great. And uh, is there actually any competitors that you would say or, or know of? Yeah, so th this space is really interesting. Um, most of the competitors that we face or that we have, um, they tend um, – they tend to be a SaaS model. So 
uh, th they are competitors, but they're kind of side competitors. Nobody's really approaching it this way right. um, that I know of. Um, and, and, um, and I know probably why, because I've mentioned before, it is fairly complex. However, however, um, there are a few competitors out there. Like, so for example, uh, Silver Sheet is one. They, they have a credential management uh, platform. Uh, and um, I'm trying to think of the name. Oh, there's one called MedSpoke, I think. There's another one. But that's more focused on the physicians. So, you know, they're, they're competitors, but nobody's doing it like we are uh, in the sense from a couple of different perspectives. One is, you know, we're kind of following the G Suite model, you know, like the Google G Suite model where they just make it so dang convenient to use the G Suite, you know, your Google Mail and your Google Calendars and your Google Docs and your this and that, that, that you just can't not use it. You know, it's just so convenient. Like you click one thing, everything integrates, it all works together. And the platform and how the platform integrates and saves so much clicking around um, and time and streamlines all that, that's, that's one of the biggest things about our platform. And nobody is doing that. Absolutely nobody that I've seen does that. And then absolutely, obviously, nobody's doing what we're doing with Hashgraph and the decentralized ledger verification system. Um, so we really are pretty far out ahead right now, um, I believe, very blue water strategy. Great. Yeah. I mean, um, after hearing you and also going through some of the information on your website, uh, I would say so. <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, I think, it, you know, you guys have done a, a great job up until this point as well. So uh, I must uh, commend you for that. And well, yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I know you got, you were talking to Hashgraph recently and, and, you know, we're really impressed with those guys and Mance and Lehman. We're, we're very excited to be, uh, uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, just to kind of be part of the Hashgraph movement. Um, and, and we, we think, I mean, I, I firmly believe that this is a, a pivotal time in technology history and that, you know, in five years from now, mm -hmm. you and I are going to be looking back on, wow, do you remember we did that podcast and we had no idea. <laughs> I, believe, I really believe that's true. I think, I think this is a pivotal time. Uh, you know, I, I went to their launch event in New York and I, I literally felt like, that's probably what it felt like when, you know, Google announced like first came out or, or Apple first, you know, launched their first computer. I mean, it was just, it had that yeah. energy, it had that feeling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I can only imagine where it's going to be in maybe, you know, five years. The space is only improving over time, I'm finding. So um, it, it, it's quite an amazing thing and to, and to be a part of. And uh, I guess now, maybe if you could talk to us a little bit about your hard cap. Sure. Um, so we are raising uh, $24 million um, total in, in the U.S. Okay, so, so the, the way that um, we, ha we had to approach this uh, following the latest SEC guidelines, uh, we've been very, very vigilant and very uh, transparent and careful by, of, of following uh, what the SEC has laid out for um, U.S. token sales as well as international token sales. We've been very cognizant of what the international laws are, uh, working with a, a excellent law firms on that. Um, so in the United States, uh, we are open to, um, the sale is open to U.S. accredited investors. Um, and actually, so I'm going to so all you non-accredited U.S. investors, don't, don't worry because I have some good news for you too. So we have <clears throat> for the U.S. accredited investors, okay, starting April 19th, we begin the private sale, which begins, uh, is one week long. And then after that, we go into the pre-sale. And uh, in, in same with the international. So uh, international uh, works the same way as all international token sales beginning to starting tomorrow. Private sale runs for one week and then it goes into the pre-sale. Um, in the U.S., we are actually working through, a, through an equity vehicle. So um, you, as a U.S. accredited investor, you will be purchasing uh, uh, shares of Intiva Token, Inc. Uh, and then the uh, utility token is actually issued to shareholders as a shareholder benefit. Uh, and this is all in the white paper, which I, I encourage you to 
uh, check out at uh, token.intivahealth.com. You can um, get whitelist and get the white paper. Um, and then for non-accredited U.S. investors, okay, we are doing what's called a 506 CF, which is the the basically like a crowdfunding type situation. Um, and I believe that's what CF is, stands for. I should probably confirm that. And what it allows us to do is for those non accredited U.S. investors who want to partake in this or participate in this um, opportunity, um, they can invest up to $2,200, okay? Um, and we can, and it's up to, I believe, $1,070,000 that we can raise for that. But we wanted to allow for those individuals who were not accredited to participate if they so desire. So that is, uh, you can, again, you can read all about that in the white paper as well. Um, and so it's open to everybody. And then, and then internationally, uh, you know, uh, we're following the international uh, rules for uh, token sales. Great. So it's a total of uh, 1 billion tokens are going to be um, issued. Okay. Um, and so 120 million um, are set for the uh, U.S. sale, 120 thousand i'm sorry 120 million are set for the international sale um 350 million are set aside to be uh rewarded or uh set aside as incentive for the licensed medical professionals in the uh platform so they'll be able to earn them as the reward system like we talked about earlier the tokenized system mm -hmm. um there would be 300 million available um, uh, additionally for the facilities and medical groups to earn and be rewarded within the system. Um, there's 55 million that are set aside for treasury and reserves. Uh, 30 million are set aside for uh, miscellaneous, which is only 3%. And then for staff incentives, it's 25 million or 2.5%. So um, that covers kind of the distribution and that is on page 22 of the white paper for any of your listeners who want to dig in and, and get the details on that. Fantastic. And uh, also now to ask you, where do you see Intiva Health by the end of the year? Um, so that could mean, say, um, number of users, um, anything in particular. Sure. Uh, okay, so, so right now we are scaling. Uh, like crazy. Okay. Um, and we are currently in the thousands and thousands of users right now. Um, we expect by the end of the year to be in the high tens of thousands, if not uh, closer to hundreds of thousands. I mean, our goal is to be hitting close to, um, you know, a uh, hundred thousand uh, by the end of this year, if not more. Um, we, we also have, um, you know, revenue, um, and I'm not going to speak to numbers, but we have multiple monetization revenue channels that have been implemented and we are seeing those scale as well, uh, rapidly. Um, and we are, we have some serious partnerships that we are going to be announcing here, uh, very shortly. Um, and I wish I could on the podcast, maybe I'll do a follow up with you or something, but mm -hmm. some very big, okay. Some very big, uh, medical associations in the United States. Um, we have been having discussions with. As a matter of fact, the biggest uh, medical associations in the world uh, we've been having discussions with, and, and they are very keen on what we're doing. So I'm hoping to be able to, we're working through legal right now, and we will be making some huge announcements. Um, also, the, we have uh, been in contact with the state of Wyoming and also the Federal Association of State Medical Boards. And they are leading a charge to implement blockchain solutions for the physician primary source verification and credentialing problem. And so they are very excited about what we're doing. Uh, the state of Illinois is also doing a, a, a big uh, project. And so we have been in contact with all of them and we are um, um, looking to set up pilot programs with all of them um, prior to the end of this year. So we have some very, very big things happening um, in Q3 and Q4, uh, and some announcements will be going out as, as these things take off. But yeah, so we, we're making on, uh, inroads in the, some of the biggest uh, spaces that we need to be, and um, uh, we're just really excited about the rapid growth that we are currently experiencing. Great. 
And also now, I guess, uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with yourself or the team, uh, what is the best way to, I guess, uh, get in touch with you guys? So the first thing I always encourage is um, if they're interested, uh, we, we have, so I'm just going to lay out a couple of things here. Uh, one, if you're interested in the token sale, please stop by token.intiva, I-N-T-I-V-A, health.com. Okay, so that's token.intivahealth.com. Um, or, of course, you can just go to intivahealth.com. That, that uh, is very simple, and you'll be able to find your way. The other one is um, if you're on Telegram, um, I encourage you, we are constantly monitoring Telegram, our Telegram channel, um, and that's Intiva Token Chat. Intiva Token Chat, three words, uh, I-N-T, I'm sorry, I-N-T-I-V-A, Intiva Token Chat. And, um, and that would be the best way to contact us, you know, if you have any specific questions. Um, I'm on there all the time. You know, we're posting, you know, kind of latest and greatest stuff. Uh, and uh, we have a team just dedicated to answering questions. Um, but between those three resources, you should be able to find 99% of what you're looking for. Fantastic. Well, uh, definitely thank you for joining us today, John. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, everyone, be, feel free to check out intivahealth.com. Uh, we will be actually listing the white paper, which is down below in the description. Feel free to click that. And also, you can go to the token sale. Token.intivahealth.com. Great. Thanks again, John. Uh, was there anything else that you uh, wanted to mention uh, to any of our listeners as well um, uh, before we close off? Hey, I just want to let them know that uh, this, you know, this sale is live right now. Um, but also too, you know, reach out to us. Um, look forward to talking to anybody, answering any questions. Um, this is a very exciting time. It's a very exciting project. Um, and um, I'm really enjoying it. We're really enjoying it as a team, seeing how things are kind of coming to fruition. And uh, just I uh, really appreciate you getting the word out for us and, and, um, and you know, your interest in the project. Thank you. Well, uh, thanks for joining us again, and everyone take care.